Hello and welcome to this App Inventor tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to make a stopwatch app. To follow this tutorial you will need to be using the stopwatch template file which can be downloaded from my GitHub page and then uploaded onto App Inventor. So let's start with a quick tour around the app template so far. Here we have a current time label which we will update to display the current time for our timer. Below that we have a legend or key which shows that this is the hour, minute, second and tenth of second column. We've then got three buttons, we've got a start, a reset and a stop button. Now these have all been named and there's a couple of other things that we'll talk about in a moment. But one feature I do want to point out is this one, the clock. The clock is a non-visible component and I've set two properties up for the clock. The first one is the timer interval. The timer interval says how often the clock will tick. Now 100 means 100 milliseconds, which is equivalent to one tenth of a second. Hence my tenth of a second being my smallest unit. Now I've also unticked this box, timer enabled. What I don't want to happen is my timer to start as soon as my app starts. By unticking that box, I've disabled it at the start of my app. Let's have a look at the blocks. So at the moment I've got seven bits of code and we're going to write a couple more to make our app work. Let's just talk through what we've got. First of all we've got four variables, one for seconds, minutes, hours and TS which is short for tenths of seconds. I've got three events. Now these events are linked to the button presses so I've got my start, my stop and my reset. None of these are quite complete. Now there's another event which I haven't added yet, which we'll do now. If I go to my clock, I have an event here called Clock One Timer, which I'm going to drag into my page. Now this event is triggered every time the interval for my timer is met. So every tenth of a second, whatever's in here will happen. So what we want to do is every tenth of a second, we want to increase my tenths of seconds variable by one. So to do this, we're going to use a common technique for incrementing a variable. We are going to set a variable. We're going to get a maths block because we want to add one onto this variable. We're going to find out the current value of the variable and we're going to use a number from here. So we're going to say set TS to whatever TS currently is plus one more. So find out what it is, add one to it, put the new value back into the variable. So at the moment this will just count in its head. To make it actually display the new information, we need to tell current time to change its text. So we're going to say set current time text to, and then we're going to get a value of global TS. And still, my app doesn't quite work. What I need to do is I need to make my start button work. So remember we said that my timer was disabled. My start button here, what it does is it changes the property of clock one, the enabled property, to, and in there I'm going to put in the true keyword. And now what happens if I go and get my emulator, which is just here, just drag it in, there we are. Um, you'll notice it's portrait. If I press Control and F11, it will rotate into landscape mode. There we go. And now if I press the start key, well, my timer seems to work. It's incrementing. This is my tenth of a second. This is my second, but I've lost my nice little display. So to make my stop key work, I just need to do the opposite of my start key. And instead of changing the time enabled to true, I can change it to false. So now if I ping my emulator back up, if I click stop, it now stops the timer. It doesn't, however, reset my timer. We'll come on to that as one of the last things we do. OK, so let's sort out our display. At the moment, our display isn't particularly nice. Let's move these two out of the way. So what I want to do now is I want to play around with a little bit of text. 
So I'm going to use this join box. And I'm going to add in a few of these strings. I'm going to have seven in total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that onto here like this. And I'm going to get, if I just duplicate this a few times. So duplicating is a really nice quick way of, of replicating your code. And I'm going to start with my hours, then I'm going to display minutes, then I'm going to display seconds, and then I'm going to display tenth of seconds. And in between that, I'm going to just add a separator. Like so. And again, I'm going to duplicate that just for time saving and do that. And now what this will do is it will find the hour, the minute, the second and the tenth of seconds, stick them together into one long bit of text with colons between it. And now if I get my emulator, if I press start, then it continues the timer, but I've now got it laid out in a slightly nicer column. So we, we're getting there, we're almost there. Now what we now need to do is, is currently, if I press start, this is currently showing that I've got 42 seconds, 43 and so on, and this is my tenth of a second column. What I want is for these numbers to be in this next column over. So now I need to do a little bit of work in terms of making it count up to 10 tenths of a second and then um, incrementing the number of seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get an if statement from up here. And before I go and update the time, I'm going to just do a few calculations here. So I'm going to ask a simple question. I'm going to ask whether the number of tenths of seconds has gone above 9. So now I'm going to put the number 9. So after 9 what should happen is it should go back to zero and one should get added to the seconds column. So let's just illustrate that if I go back to here. When this column gets to nine, this should go back to zero and this should have one added on. So let's write that in code now. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to set tenth of seconds back to zero and then this line of code here which is adding one to tenth of seconds I'm just going to nick that whole line of code plonk it in here and change that to seconds okay and then if we get the emulator back up again if I press start then you can see here that's working much nicer now. So this is my tenth seconds and as it increments, as it gets to ten, this one increments. Now all that's left for you to do on that and this bit is to add an if statement for minutes and for hours. Just to get you started with that, we're going to add one here and we're going to add one here. This one should be for minutes and this one should be for hours. Have a go at doing it yourself. Let's have a go at for sorting out the reset button. All this needs to do is reset the um, values down to zero. So let's just do that, that's nice and easy. We're going to set tenth of seconds to zero. We'll then need to repeat this for the other three variables. Now we've reset those values, we also need to change the display. So we're going to take this, which is our block of code to update our display, and put it in there. If I go and look at my timer now, we can see that if I press start, my timer starts, stop, and the timer stops, and reset takes it back to zero. So there we go, a simple stopwatch app created in a few minutes.